Okay, here's an in-context question. Okay, so I've got to read all my words. So, um, we've got cars, and they come at six per day. Oh, look, I'm counting the number of cars in a day. So that's uh, events in a fixed time. Hooray. Lorries at the rate of two per day. Okay, so it looks like we've got two different Poisson distributions. We could say the number of cars is X and the number of lorries is Y. Okay, on the road is an old cattle grid which will need repair. The local works department decide, okay, so I've got a given probability of, of um, more than 15 vehicles per day passing. So there's a target number of vehicles, but this vehicles must mean cars plus lorries. So if W equals the number of vehicles, uh, I need to check, is this still in a day? Um, probability number of vehicles per day. So I don't have to scale up the means, but I do need to take account of the fact that W, the total number of vehicles, is going to be X plus Y. So it's the number of cars plus lorries, which I'm calling W, which has to be more than 15 vehicles per day. And then I've given a probability of 1%. So this is, looks confusing. I'm giving more information than I needed. But this just means I'm going to do a comparison at the end. Okay? If I know um, that really the, the, the idea is that something, W, the total number of vehicles is W, has to be more than 15, I can work out the probability of W being more than 15. And then when I get the answer, I can compare it with that 1%. Okay? So don't be fooled when they give you too much information. It may just be that you're going to get an answer and then compare with that given value. So, right, I'm getting ahead of myself. Before I can do a probability, I need to say what the distribution of W is. Well, because Poissons work beautifully, if I add X to Y and they're both Poisson, which I have to assume they are. It doesn't say anything about independence, so there would be some assumptions involved. Okay, that's not mentioned in the question, so I think I'm going to go ahead and assume that X and Y are Poisson. So adding X to Y gives me another Poisson for W, and its mean will be the mean for X plus the mean for Y. And the mean for X is 6, because they're cars, and the mean for Y, the lorries, is 2. So it's going to be a Poisson with mean 8, so lambda is 8. So now I can do the probability of being more than 15. Don't forget to draw the list of all the outcomes. Okay, so I'm allowed to be naught. I'm allowed to be, no, I'm not. I want to be greater than 15. So I'm not allowed to be 14. I'm not even allowed to be 15, but I can be 16 and on upwards. Okay, so all of these are ticks. So my inclusion box has to go all the way to the end. My exclusion box, well, I get, need to get rid of all the crosses, including 15. So it's 1 minus the probability of being less of W being less than or equal to 15. That's less than or equal to there. Okay, uh, calculator. Okay, an x of 15, a uh, lambda of 8, and that gives me something to take away from 1. It's uh, minus 0 0.991761818, which is 0 0.0082. Now, this is the probability that I have to compare with um, 1%. So 0 0.0082 is actually less than 0 0.01. That's a probability of 1%. So what happens if it's less than 1%? Then the repairs to the cattle grid can wait until next spring. So when will the cattle grid have to be repaired? Uh, it gets repaired in the spring. So I've got a beautiful um, answer in context. And that's how we do questions where we have to... Um, combine two Poissons.